I'll watch your back. Sounds like a good plan, Hexat, though we're not really going to be heading anywhere that requires me to take the lead, except into trouble. But we're gonna have to face the Guardians to protect the final seal that keeps the Imprisoned One imprisoned. And they are no joke. Oh my, are they no joke. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, the Shadows of Arm, and when last we left off, we took care of a Demi-Lich, which should have been a far more difficult encounter than it was, and we went through a text adventure, which gave us the final of the three keys. Hmm. Now we're going to put the keys in the locks and gain experience for each one. Enough to give Terry a level. You place the key into the lock, click again to turn the key and unleash whatever guardians await you. And they are some terrifyingly powerful guardians. The second one gives us a level for Corgan, and this one gives us a level for no one. Let us sort out these levels, shall we? First, Terry. We gain a one proficiency slot, which we are going to use in Longbow, getting her to Grand Master, which gives us an extra plus one to damage, an extra minus two to speed factor, and that extra half attack per round with a selected weapon for warriors only. As for the abilities, let's go with another Greater Whirlwind attack. It seems pretty good, why not have more of them? And as for Corgan, he also has a proficiency slot, and we're going to put that in Sword and Shield style, giving him an extra minus two bonus to AC against missile weapons. It may not seem like much, but minus two AC can go quite a ways. And as for the extra ability, why not go with an extra critical strike? Can't hurt! Yeah. With that done, it is time to save, because we want those levels when we are facing these guardians, and we're going to be saving after dealing with each one of them, provided we actually can deal with them, yes. because they are exceptionally tricky. Alright, first things first, we are going to get some skeleton warriors to assist us. As many as we can get. One there. One here, and you can summon one as well. There we go. They'll certainly help out. Next, I want to get a uh, Simulacrum Corgan here. And I want Simulacrum Corgan to uh, berserk, and I want you to berserk. There we go. Then, I want you to use this here so that you are extra super hasted. Then I want you to use haste here. I want you to uh, go invisible. And I then want yes, you, Vaconia, to use energy blades. There we go. So that you have that uh, ready to go. I want you to step back. I want you to step back. And I want you, Edwin, to step back as well. Because we are going to very quickly... Uh, actually, I want you to go over here. And I think that should do for our positioning. Let's use this. The key turns easily. This lock is now open. And here is our opponent. We have a lich by the name of Azamantes and some flaming skulls. The flaming skulls are a big problem. But the Lich is the more immediate threat. The Flaming Skulls are definitely no joke. They can fire fireballs, and they can also unleash some deadly cloud-based attacks. They are uh, dangerous uh, nuisances that can kill you in their own right. As for uh, the Lich, the Lich is a Lich, and thus very terrifying. But a very high-level Lich as well. So we are going to get our... Uh, greater whirlwind attacks off as quickly as we can by going uh, that and then that. So these are all active. And now we are going to have at thee and hopefully kill the Lich before it can get off any spells. Nearly is the answer. Nearly. So what we're going to do now is you are going to now cast Breach to get through uh, some of the uh, defenses that the Lich has. And now you're going to back off over here. And we just need to uh, deal with the... Uh, oh, there we go. The Lich is gone. That's the important one taken care of. Now we'll deal with the uh, Flaming Skulls. And 
desperately move you away from here so that you do not die to the uh, cloud-based attacks that are being unleashed everywhere. I want you to uh, split your attention here, so you two go after this one, and you two go after this one, because uh, they're being followed, and that is not good. I actually want you to uh, quaff a potion, and go this way. We've done pretty well here, but it's not over just yet. There is the uh, fireball detonation that goes off every time you kill one of the uh, flaming skulls. And with you focused there, we have taken care of the first of these very dangerous encounters. Being uh, forewarned and forearmed meant that we could quickly eliminate those threats, but uh, there are more dangerous foes out there also. Please grab these for me, for these are impressive. First, there is the Serpent Shaft. Adorned with serpentine designs, this powerful quarterstaff has a chance to release a lethal toxin against its opponents with every blow. Combat abilities. 50% chance of poisoning opponents with every successful attack. The poison lasts for two rounds and does two hit points of damage per second unless the target makes a save versus death. That is a quick acting and dangerous poison. But we're not really going to be using this because it is a plus two quarterstaff and nobody really uses quarterstaffs that much outside of Vaconia. And uh, you can't equip this because a magical weapon is in use. Can we put this on the ground? We actually can, but uh, doesn't make much difference. When did we get this? I have no idea when we got this, but it seems pretty good. Yes. I'll be uh, checking that out in a moment, but uh, we have another thing to check out here. The Erin Sling. The gnomish village of Erin was long protected by a single guardian, armed only with a magical sling created by the sorcerers for which the town was named. When the village was overrun by orcs, the sling disappeared. It is a plus four sling that can create five plus four bullets once per day. That's a pretty impressive thing there, but I'm not sure if it beats uh, the Sling of Everand plus five, mainly because that is a we'll plus five Sling. Else. Right, let's uh, assemble the group here. People have taken a fair amount of damage, Edwin took a fair amount of uh, hits there, but uh, we had potions to uh, deal with any of the major harm. Now I want you to uh, pass this over to uh, Terry. Like so. Have you nothing I'm else really to curious as to if me? that uh, symbol will still be there when uh, we rest. You may not rest at this Don't time. Rest. Can we rest now? Mm, no. That's what you want. Can we rest now? Yes! And there yes, is a spider for us to contend ready. with, but we with should it. be able to deal with them. And there we go! A little bit more experience, rolling. and time to rest some more. There we go. Yeah, hey, that be now, is it right? still, it's still there. We don't really use this one, so let's have a look at this thing. Maybe we got this because, uh, we probably got this because Vaconia reached epic levels. Only the most worthy and devoted servants of the Mistress of the Night are granted these powerful holy symbols. Equipped abilities, strength plus one, magic resistance plus five percent, can memorize one extra sixth and seventh level divine spell. Let's go with that, shall we? That seems pretty good. Actually, we really don't use the invisibility uh, ring, so uh, having that removed is probably a good idea. We'll put this here, and we'll have a look at your strength now. Quick this here. Your strength is now 20. You're just as strong, albeit with magical enhancements, as Terry is, making you a fearsome combatant. If only your hit points uh, matched your uh, physical prowess right now. As for these extra spell slots, we can make use of these. Greater Restoration seems pretty good. There are so many really good uh, things that we can equip here. But I'm actually going to uh, prepare Summon Fallen Diva. Why not? As for the sixth level spell, hmm. Blade Barrier is pretty good. False Dawn is pretty good if we face any uh, undead, but are we actually going to face any undead right now? Hmm, that might also be pretty good. We're going to prepare a physical mirror. And rest again. Because we need to have those uh, spells actually ready. So, we've dealt with 
one of the encounters. But there is another encounter here that is very dangerous, and another one here. We're going to uh, save once again. I'm going to keep saving. And get ready for this one. Hmm. Now, this one is going to have yes. much of the same preparation as uh, we had before. Except we're going to try using the uh, Summon Fallen Diva ability. Why not? Hopefully, uh, we don't have to have a protection from evil to uh, make sure the uh, Diva doesn't attack us. It doesn't say that we need to. So, let's... Uh, Get this summon going! What is it now? Aha! You are here, and you have a fair few nice spells here. Cure critical wounds, dispel magic, neutralize poison, globe of blades. Globe of blades seems pretty good. That seems really good. Why don't you cast that while we uh, make some more preparations? I want you to uh, simulacrum here. And uh, we'll berserk last, and uh, only do only doing that once we are uh, ready to fight. We want a protection from uh, evil here, and a uh, resist fear, for sure. We also want a, uh, let's see, where is Death Ward? There it is! We want Death Ward, for sure. And we want another Death Ward right here. Here. And a chaotic commands on Dawn. Oh, you're actually dealing damage to the uh, skeletons here. Can you not do that? That would be great. You're preparing the chaotic commands, then the protection from evil. Then I want the haste spell here. A haste spell here. And Berserk, and Berserk. And I think we're pretty good. I say pretty good because there's no guarantee we actually will survive this, but we'll give it a go. Okay. Terry, use this one. The key turns easily. This lock is now open. Right, we are dealing with a Feromark Rilmani. Another one of these, another one of these, and this one is a little different because this one is a wizard. So let's uh, spread out our uh, combatants here, like so. We'll have you start attacking the uh, Feromark here. You two can uh, distract that one. I want you to just start uh, firing off. Actually, why don't I have you get an energy blades going? Should have done that before. But ah well, here's the wizard. Right, we should actually deal with the wizard right now. A breach spell should help out here. I want you two to focus right there. Go after the wizard. Because the wizard has access to uh, time stop, I believe. If we can deal with the wizard now, the wizard can't get off some really nasty abilities. Wizard is gone. Ha <laughs> ha. That is fantastic. This should be so much easier now. They do have uh, some spells, the uh, melee combats here, but nothing compared to what that wizard could do. And with that, we have dealt with the second of the uh, encounters here. We also got one item of significance. This club. That's right, a club. The Club of Detonation Plus Three. This crude wooden club burns with the raging spirit of the demon forever trapped within by the powerful enchantments placed on the weapon. Occasionally, however, the demon's wrath escapes in a fiery blast. Combat abilities. 20% chance per hit, the target will take an additional 10 points of fire damage. 7% chance per hit, a 15-foot radius fireball will automatically detonate. 5d6 fire damage, save versus spell for half. This is really good for somebody who uses clubs in melee combat, because you can just blast fireballs everywhere. You'll ideally also want to uh, stack up fire resistance on that person, so that you do have not uh, do have them take all the damage that they're uh, dealing in addition with the fireball power. 
now we have uh, dealt with two of them. There's one more encounter we still need to take care of, and that encounter is over here. And this encounter is one where we are going to equip the Shield of Balderun because there is a Beholder in this fight. But of course we will wait for uh, Berserk to end so that we can uh, rest up, get all of our spells back, and consider how we're going to uh, buff for this one, because this one is the hardest of the three. In part, because there's a Marilith to take care of, and we know how difficult Mariliths are. Mariliths are exceptionally difficult to take care of. Yes, but we do know how to counter their um, ability to uh, resist magical weapons, and that is Breach. Breach will negate it. First things first, though, we've got to get some uh, skeletons here. Yes. Two skeletons, and the uh, diva should be sufficient. Oh. Skeletons have proven to be very, very versatile, and I like that. I like that. Okay. Diva? Diva was very effective uh, as a combatant. Good thing I picked this ability. I'm going to have you uh, use that blade barrier last. Right now, we want to uh, make some more uh, essential preparations. That one we're going to wait on. Time for Death Ward. And Death Ward. And then Chaotic Commands to ensure that you don't get uh, controlled. And then we'll Simulacrum. And in fact, we will uh, also Simulacrum with Edwin as well, so that we have another Spellcaster. Not one anywhere near as powerful as Edwin himself, but still quite powerful. Okay, now we get a uh, protection from evil off here. We get this going. And this going. And this going. Be quick with it. And then enrage. And enrage. And blade barrier. Yeah, we need you to be invisible. Yes, yes, I see. And I think that should do. It's probably not going to do. We're probably still going to lose absolutely horribly. This is the encounter, out of all of them, that I'm the most fearful of. So, let's go. There's laughter. I don't like that. Here are our foes. Come, my sweets. Serve Nalmisra as you should. Okay, we have Nalmisra, who is a succubus. We have the Hive Mother, who is a beholder. We have uh, Zai Winto, who is a dual-wielding melee monster. We have Amaralis Zorvi, who I believe is a cleric, and we have the Huntress, who is an archer, and a terrifyingly powerful archer at that. Okay, Corgan, you take care of that Beholder. So you're the actual Corgan. Simulacrum Corgan, you take care of the Huntress. I want Edwin to cast Breach on the Marilith, so that we can start dealing with the Marilith. I want you to start uh, shooting at uh, Nalmisra. I want yeah. you to start attacking Nalmisra. I want you to start attacking uh, Yatossi, who is the Marilith. And uh, Vaconia, you should actually get a uh, energy blades going off here. I want you to start uh, hitting uh, Zaywin Toe. This is going to go really badly wrong. One of the spells has failed from uh, Nalmisra. What did uh, the Hive Mother do? The Hive Mother tried to get a spell off that would protect it. And I'm not sure it actually did, but uh, I think we've uh, dealt with a fair amount of the uh, resistances here. I want to see if uh, that'll actually work. Oh, yes, we also have a Simulacrum uh, Edwin here, who also has a Dragon's Breath. You know what? A Dragon's Breath seems like a great idea here. So, uh, actually, uh, all that the uh, Simulacrum Edwin is doing right now is uh, distracting uh, 
the Marilith, which isn't wonderful. What would you have me do? Also, uh, you're taking a fair amount of uh, level drain here, which is not great. Okay, uh, the uh, diva is gone. The huntress is uh, taking care of uh, you. The uh, you're poisoned. Yeah, this isn't going so well. This isn't going so well at all. Though we did take care of the Marilith. The Marilith is gone. And we have nearly taken care of uh, the Hive Mother. I want you, uh, Corgan, to keep hitting there. You just keep attacking there right now. This is not going too terribly. Not going too terribly at the moment. Uh, improved alacrity is decent, but we'll probably hit everyone else if we uh, decide to cast spells uh, using uh, improved alacrity. I'd rather not do that. Actually, when I said that I dealt with the Marilith, have I actually dealt with the Marilith? Uh, no, Marilith's actually still here, and we're about to die. Yep, that, uh, that didn't work out so well. That didn't work out so well at all. This is a fight that I'm anticipating we are going to lose a lot. What would you have We're going to do? lose this fight an awful lot. Quick, so uh, I want you quick, to go over be, 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 there. Be, I want be, you be, to be, actually be, deal be, with the um, for now. with uh, be, be the succubus. So I want you to switch out here and equip this because uh, yeah. you, I believe, Simulac and Corgan still have the Beholder one equipped. Mind your toes. Yes. You oh, go over oh, there right. for me, please. You have a Let's try this again. This is probably going to end in failure quite a lot. Okay, now, now? Simulacrum, uh, Edwin, I want you to... Uh, oh yes, you actually don't have the uh, things, do you? Because you're not high enough level. You can still chain lightning, though. You yes. can still chain lightning. Okay, I want you to use a critical strike thing here. I want you to use your Greater Whirlwind, something I wasn't doing before. Greater Whirlwind as well. And, uh, critical strike here. You start attacking there just to, uh, divert a bit of attention. I want you to back a bit and get the energy blades going here. There we go. And, uh, Edwin, get that breach, uh, going on your tossy. Meanwhile, we should just start attacking here so that we can uh, deal with uh, everything. Lots of crits. Are they actually going to do anything? Well, we're well, that's the end of uh, the Marilith. Okay, the Marilith is actually gone now. That's nice. Next step, uh, we have a breach here that we can use on the Hive Mother. Uh, you keep attacking there. I want you to uh, switch targets over to uh, Amaralis here, and I want you to switch to uh, the Huntress. You have uh, Energy Blades, I want you to keep hitting uh, the Huntress. Actually, no, keep hitting the Cleric. The Cleric seems like a good target for uh, that. Simulacrum, go for that. You go for Dragon's Breath. And how are we doing here? Okay, that is doing really well in uh, dealing with uh, you. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, next, we want you to take care of the Huntress. And for you to uh, swing around and start attacking uh, there. You are uh, taking a lot of damage. The uh, Diva is gone. Have you nothing else to do I was expecting that to happen. Okay, I want Energy Blades uh, from you as well, please. And while I'm thinking about it, Magic Missiles here, why not? They, they work quite well most of the time. They've done a little bit of damage. The uh, Hive Mother is nearly gone. You're doing pretty well here. You're doing pretty well here. In part because of all of the... Uh, yep, you're gone. Right. Uh, could you... Not uh, attack there, that seems good. Right, you're nearly gone. Attack here. You start focusing these here. They aren't working, but uh, we are still... We're still uh, in the fight. We're still in the fight. 
All right, if you could uh, kindly take care of... There we go. Right, now we can deal with you. Aha! This fight went so much better the second time round, and I'm so surprised that we were able to win. So surprised. I was so expecting this to be a miserable failure. But we have prevailed. All three of the uh, keys have been used, and all we need to do is use this to get through. Are you talking about stealing something there, Edwin? Because you haven't stolen anything. Also, huge pile of gems. I am strong. A massive a pile of gems. We have uh, a star sapphire here. There is a diamond. There's a rogue stone. If you haven't got That's the things the you need you to uh, fix up various items in Throne of Baal, this is where you get them. Oh my, we have succeeded here, and I'm so surprised that we have. But there are prizes beyond all the experience we've gained. There is a tiny amount of bolts. We are most definitely going to ignore those because they are bolts plus one, and thus worthless to us. But there is Taralash plus four. Taralash was a hunter renowned for his ability to track down even the fleetest of quarry by foot. Few animals ever escaped once he had them in the sights of his mighty longbow. This is a plus five Thacko bow, movement rate increased by two when using it. This is an extremely powerful weapon. The mana bow is also really good, but uh, we could uh, equip both. We could equip both if the game would let us, that is. Uh, the game will not let us. So uh, for now, this goes here. I'm busy, okay? I'm we also busy. got something even better. These gauntlets that Edwin cannot even identify, they are that powerful. The gauntlets of extraordinary specialization. These rarest of gauntlets are highly sought after by duelists, warriors, and fighters of all kind. An extra half attack per round. Thacko plus one, damage plus two. Now, Terry right now gets four attacks per round. You get three, you get four, and one and three. Yes, now, we could give what Terry uh, these, now? and we could switch out the uh, Braces of Blinding Strike, which I'm actually going to do because these are just so good. And we'll increase her Thacko, or rather decrease it down to minus 12. Hmm. And that is just monstrous. As for these... What good hmm. They give you Dexterity 18. Actually, hmm, could give these to, uh, they give you an armor class, uh, they actually improve your armor class, they improve it by one. Okay. These give you a Thacko plus one. Not so important compared to, say, having improved haste. That actually might be really useful for the cleric. And you have the, uh, Braces of Archery. The final really nice thing here is a scroll of wish. Wish is a more potent version of the limited wish spell. It will fulfill literally the utterance of the spellcaster. Thus, the actuality of the past, present, or future might be altered, but possibly only for the wizard, unless the wording of the spell is most carefully stated in some limited manner. Greedy desires usually end in disaster for the wisher. Lastly, the wiser the wizard, the better chance that she will choose the right wording. Wizards with low wisdom will more often than not meet with disaster when asking for a wish. This is a spell that I have been looking forward to getting. Oh my, this is a spell that of course Edwin failed to learn, and there is no way with this spell that I'm letting that slide. 5% chance to fail? This is still happening. Hey game, could we learn the spell? That'd be nice. There we go, third time's the charm. I don't feel like preparing this right now. What is it now? Also, that gave Edwin a level up. Oh, -ho! I'll take it. All right, summon Dark Planeter might be decent. Comet is okay. I might actually start going for extra spell slots right now because uh, don't really see any of these being especially useful. I'm actually gonna go for an extra six level spell slot. That's what I'm going to take. What extra spell? I'm not going to say no, especially when uh, it could be something like a... Uh, 
what have we got here? Here's magic might be quite nice, or uh, stone to flesh, or another tensor's or tensor's transformation, or another improved haste. That seems like a good That's thing to have. Be. And so, folks, yeah. when we come back, all we need to do to open up the portal is actually let's do that right now because it's been a long time since I last did this. I'm very well. Let's do this. You turn the wheel and the portal is opened. That actually gave uh, two people in our party a level. First, Vaconia. Abilities here? We don't actually have many more that we can uh, get uh, prepared. Globe of Blades is pretty good though. So we'll get Globe of Blades. As for uh, you, you have some more skills that we can uh, get. I feel like a uh, little bit of open lock and a little bit of fine traps might be nice for the future, just to future proof ourselves, and uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But you also get a proficiency slot. Hmm. Two weapon style might actually be quite nice, so uh, we'll take that. As for abilities, hmm. We've got a time trap, we have some spike traps. Assassination might be interesting? Will I ever use it though? That That's a question. It's quite a question. You know what? We're gonna go with another spike trap. I'll probably never use that, but I'm more likely to. And so folks, when we come back, we could go through this portal with an errant uh, line of pixels there. But with our success against the Demi Lich, I'm actually feeling emboldened to uh, engage in a side mission that is really tricky uh, at its combination. But if it's the foe that I think it is at the end, we should be able to deal with it as easily as we did the one here. Of course, we have to get to that point first, and that's going to take a bit of effort, but I think we can do it. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.